Howdy, buckaroos. This is your old pal, Gabby Hayes, coming at you with another one of them rip-roaring western yarns. <laughs> You're darn tootin'. Yes, sir, -y, Bob. Well, I, I went into town the other day to watch a rodeo. I enjoyed it, too. You know, the bucking horse riders. But the thing I liked the best of anything else was the ropers, you know. Because all of the hazes has been great ropers. Well, right now, I'm thinking of a special roper. Long rope haze, they called him. They called him that, I guess, because he could throw a rope farther than anybody would ever lived. Well, one time it had contests. See who was the best roper. First fella got up and he roped himself a, it was a pigeon flying across, you know. He got him. He was pretty good. Next fella got up, he, he roped a sparrow. Next fella, he roped the eagle flying across. Then it come my uncle's turn. He shook out his loop. He whirled it around his head about 784 and a half times and he let her go. Went sailing clear and straight up in the air. Kept on going and going. And all of a sudden he gave a yank. You see, he lassoed the star, yanked it right down, hit the ground. Once it's right there to this very day. Yes, sir. Some folks call it Texas, the Lone Star State. Yeah. Oh, he was good. Well, <clears throat> looks to me like we better get ahead with our story. It's all about the Navajo kid. He, he never knowed his real folks. But when the Indian agent who raised him was murdered, the kid hit the trail with one idea in his head. Find the killer. Only me, stranger. Make it anything. How about a little bourbon? The first one's on the house. Much obliged. You got the time, mister? I don't go in for time pieces. Uh, here's the time. Thanks. Where'd you get that ring? That, my friend, is none of your business. I asked you a question. Where'd you get that ring? I'm doing things your way, Sheriff. Legal-like. I want him charged with murder. Murder? For the murder of Joe Kirk, the Indian agent at Rock Springs. You're all wrong. Grogan couldn't have done it. He was on the stage with me, remember? You joined us later. He couldn't have been within 50 miles of the Indian agency. Maybe not. 
But he's mixed up in it somewhere. He wouldn't have had this. Whoever killed my dad took this ring from his finger. Are you sure that's the same ring? I made it myself. Hammered it out of a piece of silver. Well, I don't know just what to say. Neither does Grogan, right now. searching for his next pupil, the Navajo Kid. the idea. Now quit bluffing, kid. I'm taking you in for the murder of honest John Grogan. Grogan? Yeah, Grogan. Let's go, and don't try any of your fancy Indian tricks. All right. bad for you, Kirk. You picked a fight with Grogan in the saloon over the ring. You dragged him here and you locked him up. You still have the key. I'll take it. Why don't you listen to reason, Sheriff? Maybe Grogan didn't do the actual killing, but it's just like I told you. Him having that ring proves that he was close to whoever did. Well, him being dead is the last thing I wanted. I'd been crazy to kill him. Dead men can't talk. Your argument's got a lot of weight. But no one was in this office after you left last night. 
That doesn't prove anything. No, that's right. Come with me. During the night, Grogan was called to the window and shot through the bars. How about that, kid? I told you I wanted him alive, so he could talk. Hey, what's that? Buckshot. Buckshot. Well, how about it, Sheriff? Are you gonna hold me? No. Can I have my gun? Be careful how you use that hardware, kid. Be careful about everything. How long is that Navajo kid going to stick around here? You never ask him. Well, he bunks with you, don't he? Oh, sure, sure. But, but, but if he talks in his sleep, I never listen because I, I'm asleep myself. <laughs> Say, are you as dumb as you look? Oh, no, no. Dumber. Excuse, excuse me, I think my pies are burning. We gotta get that kid, and no missing this time. Well, if you're so fancy on the draw, you get him. I will. Uh, I gotta deliver a pie in a hurry. Well, who's stopping you? Oh, no, no, nobody, nobody. <laughs> we wouldn't have nothing to worry about if you hadn't lifted that ring off of the agent, Crandall. Well, I did. Now you go on out and lift that kid out of his boots. You ought to be back here in five minutes. Less than that. And I don't know what they're framing. But that sidewinder, Bo Talley, was checking his gun. I tell you, he's out gunning for you. I heard you were looking for me. You heard right, Talley. Kid, what have you got to say? I was standing there at the bar talking to Happy. That, that, that's right, Sheriff. I was telling him that Tally was out gunning for him and to look out. And I you... saw the whole thing, Landon. Self-defense, I'd call it. Anyone else got anything to say? Sure. The big feller knocked the little fella for a tail twister. Then he was going to blast him with his gun while he was on the floor. But he... Yeah, but look who's on the floor now. Yeah. Well, you seem to have plenty of witnesses backing you up. But the law says you've got to stand trial. Come along. Well, Navajo had one chance in a million to continue his search. And this one chance showed up. It was his friend Happy. Navajo stopped long enough to say thanks, and then he hit the trail like a jackrabbit.
horse isn't here, but that doesn't mean that he isn't inside. You cover the back door, Steve. Come on, Winnie. Hurry up and blow out the candle so we can eat the cake. Good. <laughs> here we go. No, I get the first cut. I want to make a wish. Oh, sure. Happy birthday, Winnie. Oh, thanks, Mr. Landon. Sorry to spoil your party by taking so many of the boys out of town, but it just couldn't be helped. Oh, we're having loads of fun. Do you want a piece of cake? No, thank you. Not right now. I want to talk to Happy. Well, of course. You wouldn't be any chance be knowing where the Navajo kid is, would you? Why, he's in jail, Eddie. No, he's not in jail. Of course, you didn't have anything to do with helping him break jail, did you? Oh, no, Sheriff. You know I wouldn't do anything... Look, you don't need to worry. He'll be back all right. What makes you think he'll be back? Well, because he, he gave me a little package and told me to take care of it for him. Would you mind letting me see it? Well, I guess it's all right. He'd be sure to give it back now. He said that it belonged to his mother. He left this with you, Happy? Yes, sir. I gave this to my wife just before we were married. Huh? Happy, if you know where the Navajo kid is, talk. I've got to find that boy before my men do. You mean he's your son? There's no doubt about it. Come along with me, Happy. I'm telling you, Matt, I don't like this hiding out. No telling where that infernal kid is. Now, if it wasn't for that dough, we could put distance between us and Canyon City. Oh, stop belly aching. We'll get that dough out of Murdoch safe and blow. Shouldn't have been in there in the first place. Should have kept it on ourselves. Yeah, well, don't worry. We'll go get it. As soon as I find out we've lost a kid. Your horse must have wandered off. You better go find him if you don't want to walk back to Canyon City. It would be me. Which one of you killed Kirk? I ain't gonna say nothing. No? The Navajo showed me a way to make a man talk. Well? All right, I'll talk. It was Matt Crandall. Matt Crandall fired the shot to got him and tallied me robbed the safe. That's all I want to know. are headed for town. you put in the safe for me, Murdoch. Come back tomorrow, Crandall. I'm closed for the night. I won't be here tomorrow. 
Open that safe. Hey, what is this, a holdup? You heard what I said. Open that safe. the time, Crandall? Over here, Crandall. by six feet. Your time's run out, Crandall. Don't get the wrong idea, mister. This money belongs to the government. an order. The kid is mine. Drop your gun, kid. I want you. The other way around, Sheriff. Drop yours. Do as I tell you. I've got to talk to you. Go ahead. If you've got something to say, I'm listening. Don't do it. Don't do it, kid. You can't. He's your father. What? What did you say, Happy? I was trying to tell you that he's your old man. He's right, kid. I didn't mean to wing you, but I was just trying to get your gun. I had to tell you this. Happy showed me that locket that you left with him. I gave that locket to your mother just before we were married. Look, those are our pictures, your mother and myself. It all ties in now. You are my son. Take your hands off me. You got nothing on me. Well, you're a pretty good shot, kid, but you didn't figure on my watch stopping it. <laughs> this is the watch he took from Joe Kirk after he killed him. Strange that this time peace should have saved you from killing him. Got the time, mister? Where he's going happy, he'll have plenty of time. I'm holding him for the United States Marshal. You know, I kind of like that story. I had an uncle who wants him just like that Navajo kid. He was raised by the Indians. Yes, sir. Everybody called him Big Chief Hayes. All the Indians loved him, too. Well, one summer, he was up north when a terrible cold spell hit the country. It got so cold, if you'd light a fire, the flames would freeze. Oh, it was terrible. Then it got colder and colder. Well, the earth just froze solid, couldn't even spin around no more. Then the sun all froze up, and the moon was well, getting awful. So he called all of his Indian friends together, and they all come, each one of them had a big totem pole on his back, and they climbed up on top of the mountain, put them total poles down, climbed up on top of that, and he took his lariat, and he lassoed the sun. Well, the rest of the Indians, they got a hold of the rope, and they pulled that sun, and pulled it, and pulled it. First thing you know, it was moving again. 
Well, of course, the sun rays melted everything, and everything was all right. Turned out to be the first Indian summer the world has ever known. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>